Okay, we're now on to question 1i from the 2018 MAT paper, and this is the penultimate question uh, in question 1. So the question is quite simply stated, it's just to sketch this horrible looking uh, equation. So this is an equation in terms of two variables, x and y, and we have all sorts of powers in here, and we need to find what the graph of this equation would look like, and we're given five different options in, uh, down below. Okay, so this is one of those really horrible looking algebra questions that is actually quite easy to solve once you make a key observation. So what we want to be looking at is look for patterns in the powers of these variables. So if we just look at x, then we have powers of 8, 6, 4, 2, and then 0. So the powers are going down in, in factors of 2. And then if we just look at the terms for y, we have y, y squared, y cubed, y to the power of 4. So they're going up um, in a pattern of 1. So this should uh, give you a hint that we're looking at an expansion here. So if you remember, so what we want to be looking at is the binomial expansion for two terms. So a plus b to the power of n for some n. And um, so if you remember, the coefficients of this expansion are given by Pascal's triangle. So that would give us the power of uh, this expansion. So remember Pascal's triangle, we start with a 1, and then we have two ones down below, and then the following rows, you just add up the terms above it. So at the edge, it's always 1, but now here in the middle, we add 1 and 1, and we get 2. So we've just added the two numbers above it, and we have 1 on the right. And then again, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, and it carries on like that. So now the connection you need to make is we have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And these are the exact coefficients that appear in this expression up here. We have a 1 invisible here, 4, 6, 4, 1. So this tells us we have, um, this is the fourth row, fourth row of Pascal's triangle. If we call this a zero row, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, then we're looking at an expansion of the fourth power. So this tells us that we would have a to the power of 4, we have a coefficient of 1, and then we have 4 times a cubed times b. That's where the 4 comes from. And then 6 a squared b squared plus 4 a b cubed, and then plus b to the power of 4. So this is a really handy trick that it's good to know because we can do factorizations really quickly. So now we've got the right coefficients if we're trying to match this expression above. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And we just need to make a choice for the value of a and b so it matches up here. So we can see since x uh, take powers 8, 6, 4, 2, we want a to be x squared. And then we get exactly that. And then for b, we can just take b equals y. And since the laws of indices allow us just to multiply the powers, so 2 and 4, that would give us eight to power of, uh, x to the power of 8 this lines up exactly with this expression. So this tells us that we can write the above equation as x squared plus y to the power of 4, and then we still have the squared from up here. So just, I'll write it here, to the power of 2, and this equals 1. And then just using the laws of indices that you know, this, we can just multiply 4 and 2, and we get x squared plus y to the power of 8 equals 1. So we've simplified the problem massively now. And now to solve this, we can just think of taking the eighth root of both sides. So this would give us x squared plus y equals 1 to the power of 1 over 8. And what's convenient is 1 to the power of anything is just itself, so we just have 1. But we need to be careful because we need to take the plus or minus solution here. So if we were to take the power of 8 back so if we're going to think about going back up to this equation, we would take the, put everything to the power of 8, but since 8 is an even number, minus of the right-hand side is also a solution. So we need to be careful of that, because that gives us two solutions. That gives us y equals 1 minus x squared, and y equals minus 1 minus x squared. So it's a nice little trick to get two quadratic functions out of this equation. And then we know how to sketch this. So we just let's draw the xy plane, x here and y here. So these are just two parabolas, and they're going to intersect the y-axis at 1 and minus 1. 
and then we have minus x squared, so they're going to be inverted. So they're going to look something like this, a very rough sketch, something like that, and like this. And that is how you sketch this horrible looking equation. This is what the end graph would look like.